Hey, good morning, everyone. Today is the first day of my last rotation in medical school. I am so, so excited. And it's already starting off great because I get the first two days off this week um, just to do some online modules, some virtual training, but I don't have to go anywhere, which is great because, again, Georgia's weather is absolutely garbage it's so it's like so dark outside and it's been this way for like three whole months um but since it's my the first day of the last week i thought it'd be really cute to take some pictures and post it on social media you'll probably will see it on my instagram before this vlog even goes up so we're gonna do a little bit of that have a little bit of a photo shoot i also got a new phone yesterday it's the google pixel 7 pro i have been a pixel fan ever since uh, the first Pixel came out, I actually had a Nexus, and then I switched over to Huawei for a while because Huawei was cheaper, but Huawei was also making Pixel phones, and Google was just rebranding it, so I was like, I'll just buy Huawei. Uh, so before this phone, I had the Pixel 5. I upgraded to the Pixel 7 Pro because a deal is going on with my phone plan. I have Verizon. So I basically got this phone for free. I just can't upgrade for the next three-ish years but uh, overall uh, I, I like the phone it's good uh, I don't see much of a big difference as far as performance with my old phone but uh, my old phone was getting a little jittery since it was getting into that age um, pictures are really good so we're gonna take some pictures on it and post it on my Instagram I'm also super excited uh, this today because I am going to be cooking. Where where did it go? Oh, sorry, it's no longer in the freezer. I almost panicked. But a couple of weeks ago, I got this giant five pound brisket on sale, and we are going to cook it today for Din Din. So I am really excited. It's going to be in the oven for five hours. It's going to be a slow simmered braised oven recipe. It's going to be oh so delicious. And if you're wondering, are you going to eat that entire thing in one night? Absolutely not. It's going to be chopped up and turned into meal prep, whatever that uh, we don't finish for dinner tonight. Despite the murkiness of today's weather, it was actually pretty good natural lighting for my little photo shoot. And this was my first time actually using the Pixel phone to take photos. In addition to this little shoot that I did for myself, honestly I didn't take that many pictures because I wasn't really feeling myself, but I am wearing my classic maroon scrubs. I took a lot of photos with this Pixel. And although I think that the low light situation is pretty much the same compared to my previous Pixel, I think that's because of the pro same processing that Google does. I think the back camera quality has improved significantly. The front camera is still pretty much the same. Here is the photo I ended up taking after uh, editing it out with using the front camera. I think it's pretty much similar to my old Pixel 5. It's just a little bit more detail that we're getting with the front camera, but pretty much the same. And this is a picture of Jean-Luc that I took with almost no lighting conditions during in the dark. Um, there was only the kitchen light that was on and uh, the light on his right side is actually like around 6, 7 p.m. after sunset happened um, in the middle of the night. And I was genuinely impressed in how much detail the back camera was able to get uh, on Jean-Luc, especially his fur. If you look really hard, his fur is actually fantastically like um, sharpened and without, without making it look over-processed. So I just finished taking all the pictures that I posted on my Instagram. And to be honest, I didn't find the Pixel 7 Pro all that different from my Pixel 5's front camera, but that's just the front camera in itself. Uh, I think the like megapixels and like quality, like the software quality are pretty much the exact same as the old iterations. So not much of a difference there. Still really good, a really great front facing camera for the little camera that it is. Just not much of a huge difference. What I did notice is that the back camera is definitely an upgrade. I took this picture of Jean-Luc last night with almost no lighting at all. That He was just backlit and the camera was able to produce some bokeh and I didn't even use the macro lens. I used the standard one, one X lens and it was, it was a great photo. So what I think I'll do with this pixel camera is that because it takes such great macro photos with that five times lens is that my GoPro doesn't really do a good job of focusing on things that are up close. So whenever I make some b-roll, get some close-up shots that's fuzzy on the GoPro, I'll probably use my phone camera to get that b-roll. 
I'm about to have a quick snack before I head over to the gym and pick up the phone case that I got from my Pixel. Um, but recently I found this great find at the local Dollar Tree. They actually have Golden Crust Mild Beef Patties for only $1.25. It's ridiculous to find beef patties here in Georgia that are not around $2.50 each. So I'm super, super happy that the Dollar Tree has them. Sometimes they get almost completely sold out, but I was able to find a bunch of them for a snack this week. My mom recently told me that Costco apparently sells them for pretty cheap too. I'm gonna have to look into that. But I've been to the Costco near me and I've never seen them in the frozen section, but she says it's it's not the one that she's, she goes to. So if it means I might have to take a quick weekend trip every now and then to get these patties for cheap, I, I'm, willing to, uh, I'm willing to make that uh, sacrifice. If you've never had a Jamaican beef patty before, these things are absolutely delicious and they taste even better on the air fryer. I'm just super impatient, so I put it in the microwave and I'm really hungry and I need to go to the gym. So that's why uh, it looks a little, it looks, it looks a little soft, but if it's made in the oven or the toaster oven or an air fryer, it is so crispy on the outside. I'm about to eat, take a couple bites of this. Make sure, it, it's a little flaky, so I gotta make sure I put the plate underneath. Mmm. So good. The filling is actually pretty substantial. For a dollar twenty-five patty. I'm so happy. Hey y'all, I'm back from the gym and the grocery store and guess what? I got another deal on an eight pound brisket. This is regularly priced at $50, but I got it for $16 at Kroger. So I'm gonna freeze this brisket. We're gonna use the one that I had that I bought two weeks ago. But I'm gonna freeze this one so I can make barbacoa in the future. And I mean, this is such a steal. I got this brisket for $2 a pound, eight pounds of fatty delicious meat oh my god and for just 16 dollars in this economy in this inflation economy blowing my mind okay but for tonight's brisket we're gonna make a oven roasted braised brisket it's called the sour sour onion brisket it's, um, i'll put down the recipe link below but it's from food and wine i think food and wine and what it does is that it uses whole onions some tomato paste, some ketchup. I know, surprising. I hate using ketchup in recipes, but sometimes, surprisingly, they turn out pretty good. And some garlic. Those are the only things you really need with some brown sugar and some other stuff to make the marinade for the brisket. And uh, the reviews are pretty good. One thing that I am gonna change in this recipe though, because the leftover brisket that we don't eat for tonight, it the recipe actually asks to cut the onions in big quarter-sized slices i'm actually gonna chop them up pretty finely just because when i use the rest leftover brisket for meal prep i hate having soggy large pieces of onions i'd rather have them chopped up and they taste so 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 much better so that's the only um i guess change in the recipe that i'm gonna make so i'm gonna get these get to chopping these onions slicing the garlic and just preparing the marinade and the brisket oh my god y'all these onions <laughs> are strong <laughs> AF oh my god I'm crying <laughs> so right now I cut up all the onions the four onions and put it down here this brisket is huge it's barely fitting in the ca casserole but I gotta I gotta trim the fat on top and I I made the marinade sauce and it smells so good y'all all of those ingredients combined makes a delicious smelling it looks incredible <laughs> I'm really excited to eat this brisket and my oven is actually ready so all I have to do right now is actually trim this fat off season it with salt and pepper on both sides and put this sauce over it if, if you notice that I actually kind of left the garlic pieces kind of whole in there even though the recipe said to mince it pretty well and that's because I like to actually eat the garlic and so does um Bay, who's coming over it was actually Bay's idea to um leave the garlic pieces whole in there so now I have to trim the fat. Lately, what I've been doing to do any form of trimming, de trimming, deboning, skinning, I've actually been using a scalpel and um, scalpel holder and scalpels 
to do any form of precision cutting that I have to do with meat just because I gained surgical skills and I kind of want to still keep up with them even though I'm not going to a surgical specialty also it makes me feel super badass when I trim things with a scalpel. So uh, I'll show you all how I prep a scalpel. Again, I do not recommend you going out and buying a scalpel uh, to do things like this unless you've received some proper training. Scalp scalpels are very, very sharp. You have to learn how to load them correctly and unload them correctly. Um, but you'll see how quickly and accurately I do this um, trimming with the scalpel. So once I had my scalpel loaded up, I took the scalpel blade and started making the initial cut along uh, the um, intersection of where the fat and the meat touch each other. Now I am using pretty rudimentary surgical techniques. I'm not that great at surgery. Um, never wanted to be a surgeon really, but I did assist in a lot of surgeries back in my surgery rotation and even so in my OB rotation. I did a lot of C-sections y'all. I did about eight and I was the first assist with my surgeon. We were in a small rural town uh, hospital. So I just take the edge of the scalpel blade and completely uh, strip off the fat over overlying fat layer from the meat layer and it allows me to get some pretty precise cuts to the point where like I have most of the fat off and most of the meat intact. It's really nice to be able to do this but oh lordy this took so long to do just because there was just so much fat on top of um, that brisket. But then once that was done, I just layered on some salt and then some pepper on top. At first, I was kind of scared that I was adding too much salt, but then I thought about uh, how big this piece of meat is. And honestly, it's, it's it was just enough. It wasn't too salty when we made the finished product. And then I sprinkled on some pepper. Accidentally spilled a little bit too much there if you've seen, noticed, but um, it actually made the <laughs> flavor better, I think. Then I just rubbed in um the uh, mixture together make sure it absorbs fully well i flipped it over and then oh i've dropped some onions but I, it's okay five second rule and then i uh just repeated the steps on the other side and it was uh it was it was a pretty simple brisket recipe it's just that trimming off that fat oh my god it just took so so long there was a point where like there was giant pieces and i didn't really care about pre precision as much that's when i just took a knife and started hacking at it so after all that seasoning is uh rubbed on i put on the wet rub seasoning thing i don't know what y'all call it here in america i'm american but whatever I, i'm i'm not into barbecue terms and then just lathered it on top of the brisket and then uh since the oven was already uh, already prepared once I had it smoothed over on top of uh, all the meats, I just popped it in the oven and waited uh, the five hours. So while the biscuit was cooking, uh, Bay started up her mashed potato recipe. It was like a sour cream, cream fresh, a garlic mashed potatoes. It was absolutely delicious. So the potatoes are boiling over there. And then we chopped up with some more garlic because we're going to fry them because we are garlic girls over here. And then in the air fryer, we had our Brussels sprouts going. It was a little bit burnt, but you know, flavor was there. So um, no complaints whatsoever. <laughs> They're gonna judge my, these, this is not professional guys. We're just roasting some garlic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, it's okay. Five second rule, right, baby? I'm out, goodbye. <laughs> and she is done. She's got this nice little tangy crust on top. I can't wait to, let this cool down, cut it open, and eat dinner tonight. Try one of the onions. Mmm, that's really good. Oh my god. It's very garlicky. Because <laughs> I put that whole bulb in there. We kind of burned these ones. But that's okay. Perfection is in inherently not natural. So that was actually a really great dinner last night and Bay ended up spending the night and we ended up watching a movie. I totally forgot what we watched, but we did watch a little bit of Survivor, but then the next day we got really hungry. So we went to Trader Joe's, got a little bit of a small snack haul and then she was craving actual breakfast food. So we decided to go over to Snooze AM Bakery and pick up some um, dishes from over there. I went a uh, dessert route because to be honest I got hungry and I ate something before we went and got breakfast. So I was feeling a little bit more of a sweet tooth because uh, it was like dessert for me. Bae's got to have a little bit 
she liked it so i got the blueberry cheesecake pancakes and she got the shrimp omelet and um the omelet was pretty good it was slightly under seasoned but other than that it was fluffy it was delicious the shrimp was really tender and juicy not overcooked or dry and um i really enjoyed the blueberry cheesecake pancakes but i will admit uh, my favorite sweet cheesecake style pancakes has been from Cracker Barrel, their strawberry cheesecake pancakes is actually filled with strawberry cheesecake filling. And for some reason, my blueberry cheesecake pancake at uh, Snooze AM, it was a little bit uh, underwhelming when it came to the uh, cheesy taste. So overall, we enjoyed our, um, our, our money spent on Snooze AM Bakery, but definitely had its pros and cons. That was a great dinner last night and a great breakfast. Uh, Although I did have my traditional breakfast, I did really enjoy the uh, blueberry Danish pancakes from Snooze AM Bakery. However, I felt like the pancakes were missing a something, like a little bit of airiness. If y'all are more pancake connoisseurs, let me know. Because I know Snooze does have a couple of locations in, um, in not just Atlanta, but also around the nation. Um, yeah, so I had a great 24 hours, a great dinner. I, for some reason, Sometime, at some point in, in during the dinner, instead of calling it a brisket, I called it roast beef. And then I was like, wow, this actually does taste like roast beef. But I have plenty of leftovers for uh, my meal prep. I chopped them up into little pieces, put the onions in, and then put them in my freezer. So I'm good there for at least a week's worth of food. Also, uh, to much of my surprise, I got an email about an hour ago saying that I got a package in the mail, and turns out it's this book. The book is called Authentic Selves, Celebrating Trans and Non-Binary People and Families. This is not out right now, actually. It's available for pre-order to be released May 2nd, but you can make pre-orders right now on Amazon and a bunch of other web, um, book websites. I'll put the link down below. Uh, and if you're wondering why do you care about this book so much, um, other than the fact it has pictures of trans and non-binary people and their families, is that, I'm in this book. Um, it's uh, been a two year long project. Uh, uh, about two years ago, I went to that down to Grady Hospital, took some photos with a professional photographer and um, did an interview with the editor, Peggy Gillespie. She's an amazing woman. She basically put our voices on paper and it really does center the lives of trans people and their families. Um, and there was a really big emphasis on capturing the lived experiences of trans people with different backgrounds, um, trans people of color, trans immigrants, and it's been so rewarding. A lot of my friends are in this book too. I let y'all see a little bit of a preview of my uh, little heading. My friend Feroza is in here. She's an activist here in Georgia. Actually, she's probably bigger than I am. Um, and Taylor Alexander, who's a drag, a very, very famous, uh, Taylor and Season Alexander, who are very famous drag performers down here in Atlanta are also in this book. But this is my little page. There's there's me. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I'm here in front of Grady Hospital. Um, the photographer, he did such an amazing job. His name is Robin Rain. He does professional photography here in Atlanta. But there's at least five pages of just me talking about my coming out process, realizing who I am, my journey to getting to where I am right now. And there's a little picture of me and my sister. Oh, so cute. We're twins, if y'all don't know. But me and my sister are in this book. And I'm just so happy this book is coming out. Y'all can get it. You can read so many stories of different trans people living here in the United States and their families and what, what you define as family, honestly. So uh, I just wanted to share that with y'all. It's going to be a reg... This book's going to be a regular coffee table book for me. Uh, especially when I find my forever home. Um, that was... I just wanted to show y'all my little baby. Yeah, so... <laughs> this At this point in the vlog, I kind of want to share with y'all, because now it's safe for me to share, about which specialty I applied to for residency after I get my medical degree, I have to go do training at a specific specialty, get board certified in that specialty, and um, then I can practice in that specialty. And usually for most people, specialties are usually a singular unit. 
and um, the training lasts three to seven years depending on where what what you want to do like neurosurgery is about seven years general surgery is about five years psychiatry is about four years family medicine and internal medicine are about three years so uh, those are like the general types of specialties that people apply to and because i'm going to release this video after match rank lists are due which is march 1st um i don't know why i did that there's no watch <laughs> um I can tell y'all what I applied to because I tried to keep it on the DL, uh, especially on social media, just because uh, I didn't want it influencing my ranking in these programs when they decide to rank their applicants. So I actually applied to a very, very unique specialty. It's called med psych or combined psychiatry. And uh, in, a lot of doctors have never even heard of it. There's only about 15 to 20 programs in the country depending on the time of year or the years that we're in but essentially it is psychiatry so you at the end of this training you get board certified in psychiatry but also it adds another special to it a specialty to it and usually it's either uh, family medicine or internal medicine and those are three-year specialties so it takes a four plus three year residency that should be completed in seven years if you if you were um, <laughs> um, if you had the dedication to do that seven year training, it combines these two into five years, and at the end, you're board certified as both a psychiatrist and a medicine doctor, whether it be family medicine or internal medicine. So you can basically be someone's primary care provider and someone's psychiatrist, which is something that I was always hoping to be. Um, it's been a mission of mine ever since I got into med school. I didn't know it existed, so I thought I was gonna go the family medicine route because there's a little bit of psychiatry in it. But once I heard that this was a specialty, although it's rare and really, really competitive to get into, like I wanna emphasize, out of the entire United States, only 20 to 30 students get picked every year to do this specialized form of training. And I really love the idea of uh, being two separate doctors at the end of my training. So I'll be a psychiatrist and a general practitioner. Like imagine going to your doctor, right? And you see them at clinic. Then you have some sort of mental illness or some traumatic event that you need to work through. So then you go to your psychiatrist who happens to be the same person. And then let's say you end up getting really sick one day, you're in the hospital. And this doctor uh, does a couple of weeks in the hospital out of the year and you get put under his care while you're very sick at the hospital. That's the kind of medicine I want to practice and I want to be that involved in the lives of my patients. So that's why I chose to apply to that specialty at, because it's so rare as a parallel program, I apply general psychiatry, but if I end up going the general psychiatry route, I most likely will do either a second residency program. So do the four plus three year, seven year course, or I'll do a fellowship, which is extra training after residency for one year on either psychosomatic medicine or consult psychiatry, which allows me to have more involvement in not just the psychiatric needs for my patient, but more involvement in the medical needs of my patient. But combined psych turns that seven year separate training into five years. And I, I went to the national conference a couple months ago and the people I met were just so inspiring. They're doing everything I wanna do as a future physician. And that's why I applied to that specialty. And um, I'm very, very fortunate to say out of all the combined programs I applied to, I got interviews at most of them. There were about three that I didn't. So uh, I'm hoping to match into combined psych, but, but we'll see. Um, wish me luck, everyone. And possibly in the next, next vlog, I'll actually uh, have my match results for you. Also, we ended up not using this many potatoes after making that brisket and mashed potatoes and I don't know what to do with them because I don't really eat potatoes like that uh, just because they tend to be higher on the carbohydrate list but if you have if y'all have any good high protein potato dishes that I can make in the next two weeks uh wait this might not get released in the next two weeks well anyways but in the future if I ever buy that many potatoes and I need to find a way to uh cook those if y'all have any good re high protein recipes with potatoes in them let me know because I would totally totally appreciate it so y'all we are coming at the end of this vlog i wanted to do a little bit of a reaction because i feel like y'all like my reactions for y'all but on sale at clearance at kroger this week i got these keto bars 
Um, they're only two grams of carbs. They're a great snack for someone like me who tries to be a little bit on the lower carb side, even though I had a whole pancake. Don't judge me there uh, earlier today. Um, but I wanted to give a bit of a reaction to how they taste because some of these can be a hit or miss. This is the chocolate keto bar uh, that I bought from Kroger. And ooh, it looks a little interesting already. Let me just take it out. Ooh. I'll actually put a picture of what it looks like the box because I threw the box away because it was taking up too much space. Well, it doesn't look too bad. Um, looking at it, it's not it's not terrible, but let's uh, let's take a bite and see what it's like. It's really hard. Hmm. That is surprisingly like ice cream. It kind of tastes a little bit like whey protein. Yeah. It's a little... It tastes a lot like a chocolate bar except it's a little bit chalky and not in a bad way it just tastes thicker than a traditional ice cream which tends to have more air pockets the flavor is pretty good too like it's not some cheap chocolate ice cream it's very chocolatey in a good way I like it. It's a little bit more dark chocolatey than milk chocolatey. So if you don't like bitter, don't recommend it. Yeah, y'all, this is not, not bad at all. So if you are in a low carb situation for your own benefit, health benefits, I will say this is a little bit high in saturated fat to, I think, compensate for the low carbness. Um, it kind of tastes like a, if brownies were av an ice cream because it's just so thick and dense. But it's not terrible and it has a little bit of a whey protein taste, but not in a bad way. It's just a little, little chalky. So I give these for a keto ice cream bar, maybe like a 3.5 out of 5. So that's like a 7 out of 10. That's not bad at all. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week's vlog. I hope you all enjoyed uh, sharing my day with me and getting to know a little bit about myself as I go through life. And hopefully uh, uh, my life isn't too different from y'all. So content is relatable or there's a little bit of a difference here and there to make me a, a little interesting uh anyways follow me on our instagram and twitter um to keep up with my daily life and other activism work that i do on the side like i said before it's hard to put everything that i do on a typical day in all forms of social media so uh i really appreciate y'all sticking around every day that you do your comments mean the world to me even when y'all dm me that means the world to them, the world to me i don't respond to a lot of dms nowadays but I do see those messages and I do acknowledge that I do get them and I love your words of support. It's just that lately I've been getting a lot of messages where I feel like I'm being a little exploited. So I try to stay off the DMs and, you know, prioritize my mental health and prioritize my relationships with my in IRL, my real life people. But y'all's words of encouragement mean, mean a lot. And I'll see y'all in the next vlog. This is Ben.